from. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Oh my God! And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio with wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes, anything at all. You see the latest on uh, Dwayne Wade and Star Jones. Have you seen this? Yep, Dateline Atlanta. Dwayne Wade has finally spoken up about his alleged romance with Star Jones. Here's the quote. He said, Star is an unbelievable woman. We have a great, great relationship as friends. He said, we're friends just like a lot of celebrities. We are friends. He was appearing on Inside the NBA on TNT last night, a show I watch religiously. That's the show with Charles Barkley and Kenny Smith. Kenny Smith asked, are y'all close friends? Wade responded, we're good friends. Smith persisted. Are you the kind of friends that drink out of one cup with two straws? (laughs) Referring to that much-discussed photograph of Wade, 26, and Jones, 46. The TV personality who recently filed for divorce and whose ass has its own zip code. Those kind of friends, said Smith. We are friends, that's all, said Wade, who is married to his high school sweetheart and has two sons. I wonder how she feels about him having friends like that. Good friends, Charles Barkley interjected. Nah, Chuck, Wade said with a smile. Barkley broke through the commotion to say, I like Star. She's a cougar. (laughs) What's a cougar, Smith asked. Not so innocently. A perfect lob to Barkley, it says here. Sir Charles promptly slammed the ball home. Praying on a young Dwayne Wade. (laughs) That's a cougar. (laughs) Representatives for Jones did not immediately return a call for comment. Unbelievable. Dwayne Wade. By the way, what is Dwayne Wade doing married already? Another one who if I got my hands on him, I'd wring his neck. We can talk about this. We can talk about anything we've discussed on the air this week. We can talk about anything we haven't gotten into this week. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the air. That's exactly what we're going to do. All you do here is call us at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Let's say hello here to Barry on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's up? Not much. Tom, I got to thank you. You you just say, you saved my life a couple years ago. You Do tell. Me, you gave me advice, and I just basically I dumped that bitch. I love that. Very nice. Uh, and now I'm not the happiest man in the world. What you won't like is I'm living with a woman now. But Why are you doing that? She makes me very happy, and we're, we have a very open relationship. And money's not an issue. She does her thing. I do mine. Meaning you have other people? Yeah, we go to uh, swing clubs. Oh, yikes. What do you think of that? Uh, swinging, to me, it just reminds me of the 1970s. It sounds like something you do with Jack of Jack in the Box and that guy with the medallions. I can understand that. <laughs> I can understand that. But, but you know, I'm I'm 46. I know I'm not in your demographic, but we just have so much fun there, and there, there's no jealousy at all. 
And as long as we do it together, we're okay. I just don't know why you need to live with them. I don't know. I I don't. I I can't answer that. I wish I had an answer, but I don't. How did but the you, bitch react when you dumped her? Actually, it was a pretty clean break. Um, she didn't want me anymore. I didn't want her. And there's no arguing. There's, there was no arguing. No nothing. So she wanted out as much as you did. Pretty much, yeah. And yeah. you know, there's we didn't we didn't have lawyers and all of that. I give her seven hundred dollars a month for the kids and everything else, and I'm happy with that. And that's it. Good for you. Best decision you ever made. Best decision. And it, I owe it, I owe it all to you. A couple of years ago, I talked to you, and you told me to get out. And about a year later, I finally had the balls to do it. I'm proud of you. And I appreciate it, and thank you. Not a problem. Thank you very much. Okay, have a good day. Look at that, another happy, uh, another happy customer. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. This is Oscar on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Father. Hey. Long time, first time. Uh, just wanted to know uh, the website uh, you give out for us not to go in to spy on our girlfriends. Well, I'm curious because uh, I, I don't want you going there. Why'd you wait so long to ask? Actually, because um, I'm kind of getting suspicious now, so I just want to see and go through her thing and see what I found. Well, you know, a woman has a right to have friends. Even if their first names are Hector and Pablo and, and Juan, a woman has a right to have friends. You don't have a right to be going through her email and looking at her passwords. You have no right to be looking at who she's chatting with or what's going on in her MySpace page. You have no right to be doing that. So if I were to tell you to go to Spectresoft.com and download Specter Pro and pay $99 for it, that would be wrong because she has a right to privacy. She sure does, huh? You shouldn't be looking through that stuff. I mean, what would you do with her passwords? Start going through her emails, seeing who she's writing to? No, sir, not at all. Don't be doing that. <laughs> all right, Father. I appreciate that. All right, Getting Oscar. I, I, I hope you learned something. This is Buddy. Buddy is uh, listening to the online stream in Indianapolis on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Dad? I'm doing okay, son. How are you? Doing great, man. Um, I right, listen. Um, I had a question for you. Um, it's about the topic of Robert Kiyosaki, and I hear that um, on some of your shows you mentioned how you like um, that you disagree with um, his rich dad poor dad philosophy, and I just want to know what was it that you disagree with? Well, I think the average person doesn't know enough about real estate to be making those kinds of investments. And I think the people who were enthusiastically following his advice a year ago are probably some of the people who are living in the freeway underpasses today. <laughs> okay, so um, now what steps would you recommend of how to build wealth if you're going to do it the right way? How would Step you one, don't buy real estate when everybody else is buying real estate. Okay, okay. Now, I have built wealth not through real estate, although I do own real estate. Right. Uh, I own real estate for my personal residences, and I have a couple of residences. Okay. okay. Uh, but uh, what do I know about uh, carpentry and painting and plumbing? Nothing. So if I buy properties to rent out, I have to hire people to do all that. Yeah. And, and the cost of getting that work done is substantial. Okay, I see what you're saying. Have you ever sketched out how much it would cost you once you bought a house to rent it out and how much it would cost? Insurance, taxes, maintenance, repairs, painting. That's a lot of money. That's right. Do you have it? Probably not. No, no. So Absolutely not. I tend to believe in the way that I have done it, which is, first of all, never to buy real estate when everyone else is buying it. Okay. By the way, I just bought a second home, but I waited years until all the craziness was gone. Uh, and now there's blood in the streets and there's foreclosures. Now I bought a house. I bought one when no one else wanted one. Right. Okay. That's yeah. the, If you're ever going to buy real estate, that's the way to do it. 
Okay, okay. Wouldn't and you now, love to? Wouldn't you love to hear from all the rich dad, poor dad readers who read yeah. the book in two thousand six and started buying property? Right. Where are they now? Have no idea. Yeah, they're probably living in a cardboard box. <laughs> So for a person who is trying to learn about building wealth, and, I mean, other than reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, what, what other books well, would you recommend? Well, first than? of all, there are basics to building wealth. Step one, to have zero debt. Do you have any debt? Um, a house payment and a car payment. Okay. Uh, and uh, the car payment is on a lease, or you own the car, or what? Uh, I own the car. Okay. And you don't have any credit card bills or student loans or any of that? I haven't had credit cards in four years, and I paid my way through college. Well, it's a good idea to have credit cards and use them responsibly if you want to build okay. credit. Okay. And having credit is essential if you ever did want to buy real estate. Okay. Okay. And that doesn't mean you get 100 cards. That means you have a Visa card and an American Express card, and that's it. Okay. Yeah, that you use good. them once in a while, and you pay them off in full, and that's that. Right. That never let good. the balance hang. Never pay finance charges. Never ever. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got in trouble like that before, and I wish right. I had you around. You know, the the um guide me through that. But you know, like I said, we live in Indian. I live in Indianapolis, and you know, you don't come through Indianapolis except through the internet. And that's how I discovered you. How did you find us? Well, um, I was going on the internet, and um, I was on a no marriage website, and they mentioned your name, and I started googling your name, and ran into the um. Blow Me Up Tom website. Wow. And I just started listening to you, and I'm like, I was like, wow, you know. I yeah. mean, I'm, I, 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 I'm 35 years old, and I'm going to be honest with you, my dad was a big pussy, and so I adopted a lot of pussy ways from him, and then I started listening to you, and I, I swear, man, I mean, I've learned more from one episode of your show than I learned from my dad in my entire life, man. I love that. Yeah, I mean... I, I, I tipped on a few of my friends. Um, I have a friend in Nashville. I told him about you, and I and I um he listens to you also, and um he's grew up the same way I did. You know, dad was a big pussy, and he adopted pussy ways, and started listening to you and start manning up, man. That's the same for me as well. Totally cool. Now, now uh, also the other question for you: uh, Do you have a four hundred one k at work? No four hundred one k. They don't have it available, or you haven't started one. Um, you know something? I haven't even looked into it. Need to find out about that. Okay. And you need okay. to uh, you need to have a Roth IRA. Do you have one of those? Don't have any of that stuff. I have no kind of investments um, whatsoever. That's, why, that's right. why I was calling you. Those those are your first investments. Okay. So I'll tell you what. I'll work with you. Start with those. Uh, start a Roth uh, Roth IRA at uh, well, yeah. The best place to start it is at an investment place like Fidelity or Vanguard. You okay. know, they, they've got websites. Uh, just open the account. You can put up to $5,000 a year in. Right. And have you done, you, you did your taxes already for 07? Uh, yeah, I did that. Okay. So you can put your 08 contribution in. And you okay. put it in religiously every year. Your 401k, if your company offers it, and many do, uh, you can put up to $15,500 in this year. Wow. Okay. And the fifteen thousand five hundred dollars is 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 tax free. That's pre tax money, meaning you will not pay taxes on the last fifteen thousand five hundred dollars you make this year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. These are the first to me. These are the building blocks. Robert Kiyosaki would disagree with me. I'm going to tell you right now. He doesn't believe in any of that stuff. He just believes in buying houses with no money down, and he never draws us to deal with what happens when the market uh, craters to the ground like it is now, and people are being thrown out of their homes. I, I didn't. I read Rich Dad Poor Dad. I didn't see a lot about that. Okay. Yeah, I see a lot of the things on TV, no money down, things like that, and um, was it the um, the um, tax sale things that they show on TV? And, right. And I'm, I'm, I'm real. By the way, that. some of that stuff is dated. You go try buying a house with no money down and see what they tell you. Right. Right. I've heard a, a few. Um, I've heard a few of your shows where you were saying uh, where you mentioned something about teaser rates. Yeah. And, yeah, and people and people buying houses and um, at a real low interest rate, and then the interest rate shoots up at, after a few years. So and they say, uh, I had no idea that was going to happen. Like it's a yeah. teaser rate. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I'm just trying not to fall into that trap because I mean, like you said before, I mean, you know, uh, where are all the guys who 
who read Rich Dad and Poor Rich Dad Poor Dad. So, yeah, you know, good don't want points. To uh, well, uh, buddy, I think you've got some good building blocks there. Good luck, and uh, call me again. Like this. One eight hundred five eight hundred town. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Thank you so much for not having any children. Anytime, dear. It's the Tom Likey Show. It's the Tom Likey Show. Wide open telephones on this Friday. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tommy. How's the weather in SoCal? Ha. Uh, it, this has been a perfect day. Not as hot as last weekend. Absolutely perfect. Oh, you make it sound so good sometimes, man. <laughs> Pouring <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> you ought to be here. I know. I ought to be. I will be. Don't worry. Um, I uh, heard uh, that Dino's got a big move over to Boys Town there in West Hollywood. Yeah, um, that's man. coming up. He's uh, less than a month away now. Yeah, no, I heard. You know, I had a, a kind of interesting story in uh, in Boys Town in uh, downtown kind of West Van area, Vancouver. Um, there's kind of a little boys section, and um, you know, for you have to have a really non-homophobic uh, mentality going to make this happen, but. Um, uh, went went down and uh, ended up at this club that's kind of a gay bar, but uh, a bunch of uh, agents and stuff were bringing us down there. And uh, <laughs> I ended up there, and on Tuesdays it's not a gay night, so I just kind of pulled your move and uh, grabbed a drink and went solo and sat at this little bar that's kind of facing the uh, dance floor and notched two broads in one night, man. It was- <laughs> Ah, it's, it's unbelievable. It's great, man. Like if you uh, if you don't mind hearing that, you know, heaven is a place on earth song a couple times on repeat. <laughs> you know, you can you can really you can notch some action, man. There you go. <laughs> Just after Dino, man. Hey, Tommy, can you take me out Spitza style, man? Spitza style, uh, and uh, 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 Mrs. Spitza, Silda Spitza. Oh, I want I want to hear Elliot in that and his little his woman's. Uh, the uh, the stripper's uh, song in the background or whatever that was. Uh, here you go. Number nine. The remorse I feel will always be with me. From those to whom much is given, much is expected. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Charlie on the Tom Like His Show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Charlie. I uh just been a uh, long time listener, first time caller. Love your yeah. show, man. You Thank are you. Doing, doing a big service to the Southern California and actually the world. Thank you. Um I was just I listened to your show about maybe a year or two ago. You had Ron Jeremy on as a guest star. On on, a, on here? Yeah, yeah. And he was talking about a book that he had written and um you know Ron Jeremy. I know Ron, but Ron hasn't been here in a long time. Yeah, it's probably two years. I've been listening to you forever. But uh, he was talking about a book he was, he, has, he had been writing, and this was a while ago. But he mentioned uh, that you guys used to hang out and that um, you used to hang out with Sam Kinison. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> he, my, one of my biggest um, idols, uh, second only to you. But uh, I love Sam Kinison. And I was just wondering, um, how much did you guys used to hang out? Well, uh, Sam and I uh, uh, used to hang out quite a bit. Uh, I, I can tell you that uh, his brother, Bill, uh, was a fan of mine. Uh-huh. And, and I met Sam because of his brother. <laughs> and um, I, I, I can only tell you that uh, I saw more sunrises with Sam Kennison than I've seen <laughs> on my own. <laughs> so the stories are true. He's a great comedian. He, he, uh, man, he makes me laugh and... No matter how many times I replay his albums, it's it, he was he was a great comedian, awesome person. It sounds like absolutely. Well, well, put it this way: I, was he an awesome person? He was an awesome personality. Yeah, uh, and everybody loved him. Um, you know, I, I do obviously believe that he was more than a little self destructive, and yeah, uh, I uh, you know I I always feared the worst, uh, but I had nothing but great times with Sam. 
um, you know, the party, it, it, in some ways, seemed like the party ended when he died. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I yeah. know a lot of nights when the party began when he walked into a room, I'll tell you that. Yeah, he, sa- he seems like that. I mean, he seems like a jovial, funny, just cool guy. And uh, and it's sad to see him that he, he left. And I agree, it's self-destructive and, and all, but maybe that, that aided his comedy as well. But, well, uh, I, yeah, you know, I think I do think that to be that outrageous a comedian, uh, I don't think you can do it as a character. I think that uh, you have to be an outrageous person. Yes. And he was an outrageous person, no doubt about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you made my day, Tom, and my and my weekend, and I appreciate you taking my call, sir. Um, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Can you take me out uh, African tribal style? I certainly can. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Here is Kevin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. What's up? Not much. Um, I just wanted to call and thank you so much. You know, it's really, it's amazing what you can do for people, you know. I listen, you know, as much as I can. And, you know, a lot of things you say about drugs and alcohol, you know, it just made me realize that how bad what I was doing was, you know. And you really helped me out. I just wanted to call and let you know that you really helped me with that. I'm two days clean today. And, you know, it's really a life-changing event right now. And I just wanted to thank you for that. I'm thrilled uh, that that's the way it worked out. I'm no prude. I've smoked weed. I've done lots of stuff, and I, I'm i not ashamed to say so. Uh, but no, one... but just the way you tell people to live their life, you know, it just, you know, it's just one of the things that to lead a successful life, I think, that you need to do, you know. And I just wanted to thank you for that. Yeah, and you do. You really do. I mean, uh, if you can't answer the bell when important things are going on, you're smoking too much weed. And you're drinking too much. And it's time to uh, make a change. Yeah. And I just want to let everybody else know out there that, you know what, if you think it can't happen to you, it can. Oh, there's no uh, doubt about it. And I know many people it has happened to. And that's why when you called me, I could pretty much sense what was going on out there. Yeah. You know what? Normally I'd ask you to take me out with the bong hit, but not today. Uh, Take me out Kobe style, please. There you go, Kevin. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 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 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Anthony on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going, man? Uh, pretty well. Uh, I heard today on the radio that Mariah Carey and Nick Cannon got married. That's what we heard, too. It's hilarious. I mean, like, I mean, I've I've been listening to your show since about last June. And, uh, you know, every time someone calls and they're like, oh, I'm 23, you're like, strike one. Well, I think he's about 22, is it? And uh, she's got mental issues, so it's like, what's up with that? Well, uh, that's a good question, what's up with that? And who knows if everybody was having a few drinks or everybody was a little, um, who knows what? Yeah. Who knows? Insane. And also, uh, I actually wanted to call and thank you for shedding some light on situations. You know, people call, oh, yeah, you know, my girlfriend this, my girlfriend that. I want to get married and all this stuff. I was one of those guys. I wanted to get married and, like, really badly. And she was kind of like, yeah, that would be cool. And then, actually, uh, I showed her your show. And, you know, one of those callers was on there. And she's like, see, like, we don't have to get married. This is just, you know, it's not worth it. Like, let's just be together, and then if, if, you know, things don't work out, they don't work out, and we'll just move on from there. And uh, ever since then, our relationship's been, like, awesome. Well, that's good. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. And uh, your show is the best radio show ever. Like, you know, I wish it was on for a much longer period of time, but then again, you need to rest, too, so. I need to have some time to sit and think about what I'm going to say the next show. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tom. Uh, could you blow me up? I certainly can.
1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Reggie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you tonight? Doing okay. Good to hear. Hey, you know what? I wanted to comment. I wanted to make a comment about uh, two weeks ago. You were talking about how there weren't a lot of blacks in, in baseball, Major League Baseball. No, no, and that's you, not. Wait, 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 wait. That's not what I said. I was, I was quoting somebody else. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. You're, you're absolutely right. My mistake. You were quoting someone else. My mistake. But, but you were absolutely right. They are. There are a lot of blacks, but they just aren't American blacks. But in regards to the American blacks not being in back baseball as much, I think what it is is that it's, it's about economics in the sense that. All these young kids really just want they're as I'm looking now and I'm watching my son need that baseball practice, you're seeing these kids and they want to put a basketball in their hand and they automatically think they can make that jump and they're not willing to put in the time any effort. You know, because you know you know for a fact you can't just go from high school baseball to major league baseball and you're certainly not going from from high school football to the NFL. So bottom line is, to me, the way I see it, it's, a, it's an economic thing from an American standpoint. I mean, that's just the way I see it, you know. Well, keep in mind, in the days of Jackie Robinson, uh-huh. uh, 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 college students of all colors uh, played many sports in college. I mean, Jackie Robinson was not known as a baseball player when he went to UCLA. He was mm-hmm. a track star. Okay. And not only was he a track star, he was also a football star. And I do remember hearing that. I do remember hearing that. What you have nowadays is you have students of all colors specializing in one sport and not playing two, three, or four sports. This is true. So what happens for uh, a black kid is that if he misses out on the NBA, he doesn't have any background in baseball or football or anything else. So if he puts all his eggs in the NBA basket, he's going to end up in no sport at all. Exactly. I mean, because I, I remember, and then the thing about it, I remember my PE teacher telling me some years ago, you know, a good athlete is a dime a dozen, but one with a brain is one in a million. And that's what happened. The ones that do, that happen to make it, you know, something goes awry, and the next thing you know, you, you never hear from them again. You know, I mean, it is like you said, they put all their eggs into one basket. But uh, let me ask you another question. I know you got other callers waiting. The whole uh, the taser thing. When you say take me out, taser, how did that come about? Because let me tell you, the first time I heard that time, you almost made me wreck my car, dude. <laughs> that, is, that was that is that, hilarious, man. I almost <laughs> tore my car up when I heard that, man. I'm telling you, <laughs> that was a news story. That was uh, that was somebody who was, uh, uh, according to the police uh, perspective, anyway, uh, making a disturbance, making trouble. It would not stop. Okay. And so they pulled out the tasers, and uh, you hear the result. <laughs> okay, well, listen, it was it was more than a pleasure talking to you. And, of course, can you take me out taser style? You know I can, Reggie. Thanks a lot for the call. What did I do? Get off me. No way. Get off my sister. Get the f*** off me, man. I didn't do anything. Don't tase me, bro. Don't tase me. I didn't do anything. Five eight hundred Tom one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Yo amigo, come join the party of the year on Cinco de Mayo. Broadcast live from Camachos in the city of industry. For details, go to blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likes Show. Tom like his show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. Don't forget our MySpace page. It's myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. See the video of the crazy British chick from New York. See the video of John Elway carrying his testicles in a gold lame purse. That's a photo, not a video. Uh, see the photo of uh, our favorite horse, DTB. It's all there. You go to myspace.com slash Tom Likas. You can also go to blowmeuptom.com. Lots of material there, lots of articles, links to stuff we've done. Go to blowmeuptom.com. You can also hear the show live. It streams live from blowmeuptom.com. It's all there. Well, this Monday, I'm not going to have many more chances to tell you this. This Monday is the wildest broadcast of the year. It's the first time in many months that we've done a live broadcast in front of our friends in Southern California. 
And I don't know when the next one is scheduled. So you don't want to miss this. Monday, Cinco de Mayo at Camacho's in the city of industry. This is the wildest broadcast of the year. Uh, the doors open at 2. And then the show is live between 3 and 7. And then God only knows how long this is going to go. Well, we always have a huge crowd. It's always packed. By the way, if you are 9 or 10 and you uh, would like to uh, be a VIP at this event, ladies, send a photo. Send your photographic evidence and your phone number to Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Send it in right now. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. And if you are a 9 or a 10, we will get you through the back door. No waiting. You will party like a rock star with the staff of the Tom Likas show. I've got the staff of the Tom Likas show right here. Here it is. So, uh, yes, send it to Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's Cinco de Mayo at Camacho's in the City of Industry, 3 to 7 this Monday. Doors open at 2. Uh, I, I'm, I promise you a wild show, as it always is. And if you need details, directions, you don't know where Camacho's is, you don't know where the city of industry is, you don't know where California is located, call this number, 562-695-5777. That's 562-695-5777. And we will see you this Monday, May 5th, for Cinco de Mayo at Camacho's. You've got the details now do something about it. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to James on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, James. Uh, hey, Tom, it is James. Um, calling to ask you a question about Barack Obama and why you are backing him for the vote. Uh, you mean as opposed to Hillary Clinton or as opposed to John McCain? Well, see, that's the that's kind of the the root issue is yeah, who do you vote for um, and why? But for backing Barack Obama, Obama, why exactly? What what qualities does he hold? You know that you see that you want to vote for him. Well, first of all, he's not Hillary Clinton, and I could not bear to listen to Hillary Clinton for four years. I feel the same way about Hillary Clinton that I feel about George W. Bush. When I hear that voice, I zone out. Yeah, I know what you mean because I don't like Bush. I, I am more of a Republican in a sense, but now I'm just – I'm 24, and I'm kind of confused. I mean, my biggest issue with Barack Obama is he's a fantastic speaker. You can never take that away from him. But his his policies on immigration just scare me, man. And uh, I'm in the construction field. I do uh, finished construction. I do really high-level work, Palos Verde Estates, you know, all the top estates you can name them. That's where I'm at. But I, I'm really struggling with dealing with the situation now that I see, like, like Cinco del Mayo and uh, all these things. I'm sorry, May 1st, you know, the May Day. I don't know what other countries would allow this to go on. And I understand we're in the United States, it's a free country, but, man, this is crazy. Some of this stuff Well, the reality is in Europe there are several nations now called the European Union. And once you get into one country in Europe, you have a free pass to go to any of them. Really? Is that because they're so condensed, so tight together? It's not only that. Uh, they decided that uh, to get together they would be stronger than to work against each other. Well, I've noticed that uh, my theory and thought against it is uh, immigration is a great thing in, to a certain percent. If you have a certain amount, it's perfect. But if you have too many, which I think in California, you know, we're being saturated right now and everyone wants to come. And now it's actually that the economy has slowed up a little bit. And they've shown border reports that I've, I've read and heard on talk radio and all that stuff that it's slowed down. And to me, I have a lot of friends that, that have parents that are immigrants. And, dude, a lot of them are here just for the benefits. They have no reason to, to support the, you know, the economy. Well, or, most people, by the way, I've known many illegal aliens. And, and for the most part, uh, they're here for jobs. Not I even the that. benefits. They're here for jobs. Yeah, well, I, I meant benefiting off of uh, off of our cash flow and you know sending it back and stuff because I I have a lot yeah, of yeah, but, but they're not but they're not benefiting from cash flow and sending it back. They're working, and they're taking the proceeds of their work and sending it back. Uh, in many cases, not getting income tax refunds they are entitled to. Uh, in many cases, overpaying on their income taxes because they're afraid of getting caught and they don't know any better. They do that anyway. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think this is the problem you think it is. Really? Uh, and, in fact, I do believe that a vibrant immigrant uh, uh, workforce uh, can make a, uh, uh, a community boom. I mean, South Florida, which has been full of illegal aliens but not from Mexico for decades. Yeah. Look at the economy there in general. Look at the skyline. Look at what has been done there. 
I, no, I, I don't don't take it as I think that they're bad people or nothing like that. I just think uh, I know in my business I've I've looked at how these guys run their situations and how they how they live and my God, I mean I felt bad for some of them, but then some of them just they could care less about anything but you know better, bettering their selves not in the United States but just temporarily. That that hasn't been my experience. I I've known you know I date women <laughs> from from Latin American countries. Uh, Mexico uh, being uh, the primary one, and others as well. And uh, I see people who want to come here and work. They may have a drunk nephew uh, or a uh, dope smoking cousin, uh, but but in general, this is the hardest working group out there. Yeah, I'd say so. I, I think a lack of education is definitely a situation. But as far as Barack Obama is concerned, you know that that scared me. And also with the uh, immigrant women. Dude, they don't talk as much. It's so much better. Right. Oh, my God. Awesome. You don't want to live in immigration? Are you kidding me? It's going to ruin my action. No, I would never want to eliminate it. I just want to – I think that what they should do is just monitor a little – in California mainly because it's such a bordering state to New Mexico. And it's like people get really upset about Mexicans and all that stuff. And I've never personally – I have all my friends are Mexican down here because I live in California. I don't like the fact that when they come here – uh, I feel that they don't adapt the way that the old immigrants did. I feel that now it's so, uh, I mean, you drive into Bell Gardens. I, I live in, um, I live in Fullerton and I drive to Bell Gardens sometimes just to go pick up materials from a cabinet shop. Man, this place looks just like Tijuana and I, yeah, I yeah, yeah but, but, but you have to understand, we're talking about 12 million people. Yeah. 12 I know. million people. And, and I've got to tell you, I know many people who are Latino and I can tell you, that generally speaking, we are talking about people who are bicultural, bilingual, generally harder working than you and I are. Yeah, well, I don't know about me, but as a sense, I know what you mean. I know what you're saying. I, I work. I mean, I really work my butt off. That's for sure. But um, you know, I got the guys next to me. They work hard. Uh, I just I get worried about uh, the, oh the borders being completely open because if that comes, man, that could sacrifice my job, not yours. By the way, I've never heard Barack Obama call for the borders to be completely open, ever. Uh, well, when they ask him on his standpoint, he just, you know, he answers it like a typical politician, and it, that scares me. I want to hear I want to hear what he's going to do different, not only just about immigration, but all around. What What is him or anyone really going to do, Tom, to fix the situation? There's, like, no way to fix it. It's crazy. Yeah, but what is, what is Hillary Clinton or John McCain going to do? Oh God! Who knows? Hillary Clinton is going to blab her mouth. Keep in mind, keep in mind the reason there are the reason there are so many illegal immigrants in the United States uh -huh. is because Republicans go on talk shows on TV and wave the flag and say how terrible it is, mm -hmm. and then they accept contributions from hotels, restaurants, uh, farms, agricultural groups, and then they uh, do nothing while people flood into the country. Yeah, I, I know, I know. Have you heard about that? Uh, that those guys that got they shot that immigrant because they thought he pulled out a gun, and this guy was smuggling drugs. And those guys are doing prison now. They got like six kids at home. They were they were uh, I don't know their exact job titles, but these dudes are now in jail, and they're American citizens with Hispanic last names. And because they shot this dude in the butt, who they just they just proved that that guy was smuggling drugs. And they but they, look, they, even yeah. you can you can name you can name individual stories like that, but it, it yeah. doesn't change the general picture. Yeah. And the general picture is that the economy in California is a lot better than it would be without Latinos. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's. I think it's so inset now. There's so many of them. It's just going going to be like impossible to, to not fix it, but just you know to gain the white people back. They're all moving. I mean, I I'm here in Downey. They're not all uh, moving. That's 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 crazy. That uh, white people have moved. Yes, a lot of them moved out of Downey and they moved to other places. Well, they have, but they're pretty fed up. I could tell you that. A lot of people don't like the way the culture is going. I think uh, I'm from I, I'm Italian, and uh, I have very fine craftsmanship in my blood, and that's why I get the work I get. But the problem is that I notice a lot of my friends too that are Mexican are so fed up with seeing brown pride and just that stuff sparks racism right off the bat. And wow. I never, if I ever put white pride in my car, oh my God, I'd be shot. These guys, it'd be the most racist remark ever. And I, 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 I wish we had more time, but we're out of time for this hour. Thank you so much for the call. I will see you at Camacho Cinco de Mayo this Monday. The Tom Likas Show.